Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. Here on this channel, we talk about stuff that isn't worthy of TV channels like the History Channel. Tonight, the History Channel, again, isn't playing any history. All they're playing are reruns of American Pickers uh, over and over again. I think of that show as American Butt Pickers is what I think of it as. So anyhow, I'm going to bring you uh, some real history, and tonight we're starting... Uh, a series on one of the old 300, so one of the first uh, Texans to come with Stephen F. Austin. This is William Smithers, uh, or Smothers. So Smothers, uh, he has many uh, relatives or descendants here uh, living in Texas today. I believe Smothers uh, was what was the is the current name basically. So I think he was uh, called Smithers, and then eventually the name was uh, changed to Smothers. But anyhow, uh, this is someone who's very appropriate for this program because he's someone whose shoes we are unworthy to stand in. So as I read this uh, story about him uh, over several episodes, I'm sure you'll agree uh, with that statement that I just made, that we're definitely unworthy to stand in his shoes. So William Smithers was born uh, in 1760 in Virginia, uh, and he ended up dying in 1837 in the Republic of Texas. Uh, so he uh, first lived in Virginia, and then he uh, was one of the first settlers of Kentucky, and then he was one of the uh, first settlers, or American settlers, uh, in Texas, and uh, the eventual... Uh, with the eventual revolution, his um, uh, one of his sons and I believe two of his grandsons uh, fought in the Texas Revolution. So there's quite a lot of great history about him. So tonight I'm going to go ahead. What this is, is this is a story. It looks like it's a biographical sketch, uh, but I was fortunate enough to find it on Wikipedia a few months ago. It's so probably a year ago, actually. But I found this and it was just on Wikipedia and it looked like a biographical sketch that you would get out of, you know, an old uh, history book. Uh, one history book I have that's similar is Historical Sketches of Kentucky. But anyhow, I found this on um, uh, Wikipedia several years ago. Uh, this man, Bill Smithers, he was actually a neighbor of Joseph Hamilton Davis, who I've done an extensive uh, series on. So um, this is interesting to tie one of the first settlers in Kentucky and Texas uh, to Joseph Hamilton Davis, who was his neighbor uh, on the Yellow Banks, which is present-day Owensboro, Kentucky. So anyhow, I'm going to uh, start this, and uh, this will be a multi-part series. We're going to go through uh, his early life, then his arrival in Kentucky. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about his uh, legal battle. He had a very interesting legal battle, and he was defended uh, by Joseph Hamilton Davis in that battle. That'll probably be around episode uh, three or so uh, of this uh, mini-series I'm doing. <clears throat> So anyhow, like I said, I found this on uh, Wikipedia, but um, this is something that is no longer on Wikipedia for some reason. So it's, again, perfect for unworthy history because this story is apparently unworthy of Wikipedia. The name of this remarkable pioneer, Bill Smithers, has been variously spelled and pronounced as Smither, Smithers, Smither, Smithers, or Smothers. But Smither was probably correct, and Bill is supposed, of course, to stand for William. The above is the name by which he was familiarly called. He was born on the western frontier of Virginia near the Holston River. His father was a hunter and frequently took his son with him to assist in bringing home the gang. <clears throat> One morning he started at daylight telling his wife that he would take a little round and be back for breakfast. As he did not return, a search was made for him. His body was found about two miles from home, nearly devoured by the wild beasts, but the narrow blade of an Indian tomahawk had been driven deep into his brain. His wife, so this is Smither's uh, mother, was so deeply affected by his death that she lived only nine days and was placed in in uh, was placed in death where she had been in life, close by the side of her husband. William was so upset that he did not close his eyes in sleep during the night that followed her burial. Before day, the young boy went out, and standing by their graves, boy as he was, he raised his hand to heaven and swore that he would avenge their deaths. William was 12 years old at the time of his parents' death. There were also two other children, James, age 9, and Molly, age 7. One of the neighbors, a newcomer having no place of his own, proposed to take care of these orphan children for the rent of the farm. This was agreed upon, and he moved in. 
During that same year, William went to live with his uncle in Virginia, who agreed to give him a good education and $100 in money when he became of age. This uncle, who was named Chrisman, was a man who worshipped the rich and scorned the poor. He was so cruel and overbearing to his orphan nephew that the latter ran away from him in a few years. He wandered through the country, stopping wherever he could find anything to do, but found his stock of money growing less and less every day. He was in a little town called Taylorville, near the Catawba River, when Colonel Isaac Shelby came through, beating up for volunteers, and William joined him because he knew not what else to do. At that time, the British had a military post on King's Mountain, so named from the fact that it stands alone, overlooking the country on all sides. Now, this is a mountain in South Carolina, and this would be where, uh, in 1780, uh, Bill Smithers, William Smithers, would participate uh, in the Battle of King's Mountain, which proved to be a very pivotal battle uh, in the Southern uh, Campaign. It was at this point that the Battle of King's Mountain was fought between the British and Colonel Shelby's men. The latter were successful, having killed Ferguson and a great many of his men, captured a thousand prisoners, two thousand muskets, and all their military stores, and lost very few of their own men. So again, this was a critical battle. Uh, this story is going to come back uh, in uh, Bill, Bill Smither's trial uh, when Joseph Hamilton Davis references his valor uh, in this battle on King's Mountain. So he was uh, only about uh, 20 years old or so when that took place. After his discharge, William again wandered around the country until the following spring, when he was taken by a squad of men belonging to General Greene's command who had been sent out to press Teamsters to drive the wagons. Although Smithers was exempt from the duties of Teamsters, he was detained until the Battle of Gil Guilford Courthouse was fought, and was then discharged. After this, he could find no employment and concluded to return to James River and visit his uncle and friends in that vicinity. But his uncle forgot to give him the hundred dollars. Although he was twenty-one and had a very good education, he bade him goodbye and started for his native town to visit his brother and sister. He found them still living with the man who had taken the farm. The man had a daughter whom Smothers courted one Sunday evening and married the next Thursday. He was very anxious to proceed immediately to Kentucky, but his wife and sister insisted that the snow and ice on the mountains would endanger their lives, so this move was postponed until the spring. On his arrival in Kentucky, he found the region around Lexington more densely settled than the country he had left on the, on the Holston. He had come to fight Indians and did not like taking wages as a hand on a farm. He met a party who were coming down to fortify in the Green River country and joined them at once. They built a fort at Hartford on Rough Creek, where they were, they were besieged. They found that the Indians generally came from Lower Kentucky, waiting Green River at the falls. They established a fort there and called it Vienna. Uh, so it's still uh, there, present day, it's still called uh, Vienna in Kentucky as well. At first, of course, it was only a fort. Afterward, a town was laid out there, and it was named Vienna. It is now called Calhoun. The father of William and Thomas Downs, a Baptist preacher, was the last man killed by the Indians here, which was between 1790 and 1792, within a few hundred yards of the fort. The section of the country about Vienna was settled up fully ten years before Bill Smithers came to Owensboro. The Indians seldom came in great force afterwards, and they soon scattered. Mrs. Smothers lived only a few days after moving to Kentucky and died, leaving one daughter and two, and two daughters and one son. Miss Molly Smothers remained with her brother for many years. Uh, so yeah, so um, Miss uh, Smothers, his uh, sister, she came to Kentucky along with him and uh, his wife. So his wife was the daughter of the farmhand that uh, Bill Smithers' younger sister and brother grew up with. So they all moved uh, to Kentucky, and he went down uh, near Green River to Vienna to settle what was then a very uh, western part of the United States. So he was really one of the first pioneers to the state of Kentucky. Uh, so anyhow, that's it for uh, this episode. We'll continue this history uh, of one of Texas's first uh, American settlers uh, who eventually would move there in uh, around 1821 or so. So anyhow, if you enjoyed seeing this show, then be sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow us on Twitter for more uh, updates about episodes. And we will see you next time on Unworthy History.